There we go. Hello, hello, and welcome. Let's see where everyone is chiming in from. Poly, Alabama. I've been there. Washington, South Vermont. What's any? Nebraska? Is that Nebraska? Utah, Ohio, Mandeville, Austin. Nice. You guys ready to set some goals? Hello, hello, Duluth. I can look at where you guys are from and know before I look at the name Panama. All right, we got a good mix here. Are you all business owners? Let me know if you are a business owner, what type of business? Are you service-based? Are you a coach? Are you brick and mortar? How would you describe what kind of business? Consultant, parent coach, life coach, coach for moms. A coach, I like it. Life coach, trauma recovery, intuitive human design mentor, business coach, mind body coach for moms, integrative mind body for ambitious women, coach and astrology, integrative health coach. Awesome. We got a lot of coaches in the house. All right, guys, we're going to get right to it. So I'm going to share my screen. I want to make the best use of your time. Make sure you get a lot of value from today. Can you see my screen? Let me know that first. Get this up here so I know what I see. Mallory is in the house. So if you need anything, she will be responding in the chat. She's also next door to me. So I may be hollering at her. Business coach, Mr. Torres. We are talking about you this morning in role play. (laughs) All right. So welcome to the goal setting workshop. My name is Kim Gilry. For those who do not know me, I am a life coach, health coach, mind body, master coach, trainer, massage therapist, and holistically minded business owner. You all know what that means? It's the whole thing. It's the family. It's the wealth. It's service. It's myself, my spiritual contract to be here and what I have to serve. Holistic is bringing in all parts, health, wealth relationships. I bring that all to my business. How about you? Is it important that you have a well-rounded business life? Is that important to you? Do you have your kids involved, your grandkids? Do you have vision and legacy in your blood? Let me know what's happening. Yeah, let's go. All right. So I believe you have to grow the owner to grow the business. It starts with you. You agree? So as always, this is the first agreement and commitment that I ask from the participants. Are you willing to let go of what you know right now in order to know something else? Raise your right hand. I am smart. I know a lot. My mind is addicted to knowing. But for the next hour, I'm willing to know something else. Because it's not what you don't know that hurts you. It's what you don't know that ain't so, Tom Sawyer, right? It's what you don't, it's what you do know that ain't so. It's in other words, it's the misinformation that is stopping you from reaching your goals. It's the misinformation that's killing our dreams. Do you agree? Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Raising your right hand. I love it. So here's what you don't know, right? Here's what you know you don't know. So it's like right here, you're like, yeah, there's a few things I don't know. Oh, I know I don't know how to do dot, 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 and dot, dot, dot. That's what I'm here for. Well, I'm going to ask you to go beyond that and to know something that you didn't even know you didn't know. Got it? That's the commitment for today's class and for every presentation that I do, actually. All right. In order to create new results, you need to understand feelings and emotions. So it's not just a thought process. It's not just about your thinking, right? So first of all, let's get clear on what is desire. Desire is something that is planted inside of you. It's a want and a need. It's an urge. It's an urge to create because we are creative beings. I want dot, dot, dot. What do you want? You can write it out in your notebook. What do you want? And then I imagine having 
That's where you start bringing in the feelings. When you can see it, when you can imagine it, you begin to feel it and you connect with it on a deeper level. I want, I imagine having, having, then I feel what it's like to have it. We're going to go through this process today. And that makes me want it more. Now I'm inspired to take action from the felt desire and the momentum. That is the trajectory. And that's what we are going to be implementing in today's call. So it's about believing and feeling and then taking the action while you're in the feeling of belief. Everybody cool with that? You all understand? You've been to class with me before, so this makes sense. Not the first time you heard it, but maybe you're hearing it on a deeper level. Yeah, give me something in the chat. Let me know you're still awake. Can't even find the chat right now. Where is the chat? Oh, there it is. Give me something. Or you know what? There's some little love signs and some little thumbs up. So this is the trajectory. It's how you think, feel, and act. And that is what creates what you get. But first, thanks for the hearts. But first, you have to be open to receiving it. And this is where most of us fall short. So it's like, okay, I think about it. I see that other people have it. I wonder what it would be, feel like for me to have it. And that momentum puts you into action. So then you take the steps going towards it. Kind of like I'm looking at the book behind me. I see other people write a book. I think I can write a book. I wonder what it would feel like to be an author. I wonder what it would feel like to write my message and share it with others. And then I started taking action. And then I have the book. But you know what? Not everyone who starts a book finishes a book. Would you agree? It's the open to receive. It's the having it. Like I can be, I can have and hold the place of an author, right? It's like I could write and then put it in a drawer. I could never publish it. And that's what many of us do with our goals. We think about it. We think about what it'd be like to have it, but then there's something that happens in between thinking and feeling and then actually receiving and having. Is that any of you? Just put in the chat me if that is you. Okay, good. We're on the same page. All right. So think, feel, act, willing, willing to receive. So today we are going to talk about what that thing in the way is. And the part of this is your mindset and your mindset. I've done a lot of research and study on this. And the mindset is the thought, like the, the, I can't think of the word I'm trying to say. It's like the container, the container for what you've experienced what you believe, what you want, what you desire. The mindset is like an attitude. It is this set point of what I can have or what I can't have according to what I've seen and experienced and been heard, right? And so the four areas this comes from, if you want a deeper dive in this, you I'll send you to a link of me doing like a dive on it. Today, we're just brushing the surface. Your beliefs come from your family, the generations of beliefs that's been passed down. This is just how we do it around here. This is how our family functions, right? This is what it's like for people like us or people who don't have money or people who, this is just how we do it in our culture. And then you have religious. What have you heard in your upbringing in the church and in religion? What is that belief? Because I see a lot of, like you can have anything, you can heal, name it and claim it. And then we have all this guilt and like, you're not going to earn your way to heaven and like all of this, these other false claims, right? So it gets kind of confusing. Any of you have confusion around religion and around like what you, the text and the documents and the things that you've heard compared to how it really is. Any of you have any wounding around some of those beliefs between what your family, what your culture, your native family believes. Like, yeah, a lot of us are different nationalities. We've had different upbringings. And then we top that with 
what religion tells us. Then environment. What is your environment? Who, who's in your house right now? Who did you talk to this morning? Who were you with over the weekend? What is the environment? When you go to the grocery store, even like the environment that you are in, what you hear when you were at school, it was the janitor and the bus driver and the teacher and the principal and your classmates. That was the environment that you were in. And then we have society. This is what you see on social media. This is what it's the thing or they say. Society is the they. Does that make sense? The they's of the world. They want, they say, they did. Got it? So you know it all four of these. Which one do you think has created the limiting beliefs that are actually stopping you? Where do you think those came from? Is it your current friends? Is it society and social media? Is it generational? Is it coming from your family, like how your family believes? Or is it coming from religion? What is it for you personally? Just put it in the chat. What do you think is the strongest of these four? Family and environment, religion, generational. Yeah, it's it's pretty intense. This was through my whole healing journey. You know, I started like really investigating these things. Mine, mine definitely, I had some religion. It was my interpretation or how like scripture had been interpreted to me. Generational, that one's a little tricky. I really didn't know my, like, I don't know my mother. Like I didn't have that. And then like a lot of influence there, but definitely environmental family. Yeah. I think family and religion are the two hardest to overcome in, in my working with people in my own personal experience, because there's a sense of belonging and being and breaking ties. And there's a lot of grief in those two, because it's like the very nature of our being is to please God. And so it gets confused with religion or spirituality and religion. And then we have this, we're indebted to our parents, right? So those two are pretty deep. All right. So this is the last of the slides and then we're diving into the goals. So to attain your goals, mental is the way that you think about the goals. So it's your mindset. It's your thought work. Like you have to mentally align. And then you have the spiritual alignment. So it's like, you're thinking about it. You see other people. So you have thoughts about what you want. And then you have a spiritual understanding. Is your spiritual understanding limited or limitless? Like the actual essence of being that's deeper than the surface for you. Do you all agree that there's something bigger than us than this body? That we have like a purpose here, that we have a soul, spirit, limitless. Okay. And then you have... The emotional. So all four of these have to match up for you to attain your goal. So that's why I'm covering this first. You have to be emotionally invested. In other words, when you think about it and you connect to it, you need to feel. You need to feel what it'll be like. This is, I have a, a product called the flaw of attraction. And it's the feeling that's preventing you from attaining the law of attraction. It's the F, it's the flaw is you're missing the feeling. And a lot of us just, we have turned that part of ourselves off in order to protect us, but then we didn't realize the validity of how all emotions play a part in our goal setting. Got it? The last part is you have to be physically invested because you take action in physical form in the material world. I have a body, I, I have this shirt, I have this office, this car, this money. For sure, I have some cash somewhere, some money. So it's in physical form also. Is everyone clear about the relevance and importance of attaining on all four levels? You, when you put these together, it's like an energetic recipe. Is everyone clear? Let me know in the chat. Do you have any questions before I move forward? I'm doing really good on time. I'm assuming we, wait, I think we got something missing. We've got some thumbs up. Everybody's good. You know that it takes all four components. Energetic recipe. All right, Emily, put that in my branding. You know how this works are going to discuss what it means to be on the same level with all these. Yes. You just right now, I want to make sure that you understand that it takes, it requires all. 
It's more than a thought. You know the podcast called More Than Mindset? It's more than just a thought. There's actually other components, our nervous system, our neurology, like what's going on within and without the subtle body and the physical body. It's all of it. Everybody got it? By the way, for those who have not signed up for VIP yet, I highly recommend to sign up for it. I'm just going to put this plug in before we move forward because this ends at one o'clock. Well, in 45 minutes, this is going to end. And we're going to continue where you're going to be able to raise your hand, get breakthrough coaching, and we're also going to create a virtual vision board. We're going to go into Canva. All you need is a free Canva account. And everything that we come up with in the goal setting, you're going to put on your vision board so that you can feel it, understand it, like touch it. I want you to be able to get that experience. So if you have not signed up for VIP, I highly recommend that you do. I think it's going to be very relevant and I'm going to give you a bonus worth way more than that. That's going to be a surprise. Just so you know, I can tell you a little bit about it, but I don't want to use this time because this is workshop time. All right. So everybody clear what these four components are. You've either signed up for VIP or you're going to hit that link right now to make sure that you can get the second part of this. Okay. Let's go. So today we are going to talk about the four steps to setting and getting your goals. How many of you here set goals already? Just put me or yes. How many set goals? Beautiful, nice. I love that. Is there anyone here? Not enough, me. Okay, is there anyone here who actually, I'm not the man, no, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get to the next question. Is there anyone that you actually have a hard time breaking through what you see right now and imagining because it's a it's a real thing by the way don't like feel shame if this is you but like I'm a visionary and I see in a very broad that's why my clients like working with me because I can paint this 360 that's like way out here it's just the way that I I assimilate information and vision and attainment. Okay, it's hard to vision or division. That is very common. It's actually more common than not. And let me tell you why. When we were children, we were taught not to dream too big, not to expect too much. And that was all done in order to protect us and prevent us from being hurt in some way. It's like, you know, don't like that's just going to be disappointing. You should just like everything that's supposed to be is right here. This is enough. Like it's going to, you don't need to do that. You don't need to go there. That's too big. And how about this? Cause this one has been really painful for me. I actually was speaking to one of my mentors, Brooke this week about, she's got a $51 million business and is changing like everything. And so I was having this conversation with her about the fear of going too big and all the negative things that happen once you're like on a bigger level and more people know you and then you start receiving some negativity. Are any of you afraid of that? Are you afraid if you're too big and too bold and too much that it's going to hurt you in some way? I can vision, but I feel like it's more surface level, 100%. I'm afraid of it now. Did you hear when I asked that? That really wasn't my question, but it's where the question went. It has been such a fear for me. And I've had the luxury of having a lot of great mentors. And I want you to know that it's the thing that scares me the most is witnessing in the audience, the negativity of what people are saying about them, that that has somehow contaminated my ability to receive on a big level. Yes, there is a fear around it. I moved through it, but I'm shifting into more and new, it bring, oh yeah, and more is now bringing it up again. Yeah, yeah, like I will leave people in my life behind. Okay, so all of you take note of that. It is very important. It's also a protection mechanism that's happening in the mind-body that the brain needs to protect you. It is a survivor, survival like component of your being and it it's like the way that it's characterized or the characteristics are like it needs to be easy it needs to be familiar it needs to happen quickly like it's there shouldn't be any trouble and you should stay alive like you shouldn't die (laughs) 
<laughs> and so it brings up all these warning signs and with social media and us watching a lot of big names come down, the cancel culture, like all of that stuff is a part of shaming. And I just want you to take note that that is, if that's a part of you, it's also a part of me. It's what I've been working through. Matter of fact, my mentor that I hired for the year is about holding space for more, which I'm calling like havingness. I want the ability to receive, to have, to hold, to contain. And so I'm working on that personally. I've done a lot of work around it the last three years. Yep, such bullshit. It used to serve me, now it doesn't. I'm working to overcome it. But isn't it crazy that mentally, you know, I don't want to be this way, but psychologically, like in your actual physical body, in your nervous system, it's actually like imprinted in there. Like when I was talking to Brooke, I was super calm. I knew what my question was. But once we started talking, I like I had something and we were talking about it. All that started coming up and you could see my nervousness on the call. I was not nervous. Like my head, what I was thinking, I was not nervous. It was a subconscious dialogue that was how it was like a way of like beneath the surface that was coming out from me which is why I raised my hand which is why I want to do more of that so that that can come up in a safe space so just know if you're working through that you can get help around it okay the thing is to talk to someone who's been through it don't talk to your neighbor who's never done it it's so surreal, like knowing I can move, but sometimes something invisible physically holding me. Yeah. Well, if some of these people here saw me on that call. So that's why I'm talking about it. And I was fine. I was just like chitter chatting, you know, and I had one question, had it written down. And then the conversation went to that. And at you, I started getting red and I started like in my nervous system started cleansing in real time. It was almost like a blushing that was happening and I got really heated. So just know that that happens. So you want to be part of like a community and environment that helps you move through that. So it's not happening publicly. And if it happens publicly, it does. Okay. Four steps to set and get your goals and find out what's in the way. I got 20 minutes to wrap through this. Y'all ready? I hope that was helpful and not wasted. Okay. Ready? What do you want? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a minute to answer. What do you want? Write it down. What do I want? I'm going to give you a second. Don't be afraid to write something big. You got two minutes. What do I want? I want you to make a list, not just one thing. I want money. I want wealth. I don't want to just have revenue. I want wealth. I want my family to be intimate and strong. I want my business to grow. I want to heal relationships. I want double the clients that I have. You all have a workbook, right? Mallory, did you put the workbook in the link? What do I want? In VIP, we're going to go through these, by the way. But for this part, their list, please do this while we're doing it. There's the workbook in case you didn't get it. What do I want? Put at least three to five things. And then I want you to write, why is that important? This is my $5 million year. Why is that important? Some people think that's ridiculous because they can't see what that means to me, but I know what it means to me. I know everything that is going to like, why I need that in this container. I know why I need you have any kind of thoughts about Oh, you know, money's limited. If you have it, if you have too much, someone else doesn't have none of that crap is true, just so you know. So set the goal to be attainable, but more than that, to be connected to where you're going. There needs to be some sort of understanding or commitment to what you're going to do with it. Don't just throw out $10 million. Like, what I know what I'm going to do with this. I know I am going to help normalize women's wealth by creating a foundation. I believe it's sinful for any woman, especially a working woman, mother with children to earn less than $50,000 a year. I'm like, we're going to change that. So I know in order to open this foundation, in order to reach these women, I know what it's going to cost to do that. So I have a connection. I have a purpose. It's an importance. That number's not just a number on my vision board. 
Everybody understand? Give me a thumbs up because we're going to move on. What is the connection to that? Why is it important? You got to know this. So if you have a question about this part, just put a little X on your page and I'll get to you in VIP. You'll just raise your hand as soon as we get into VIP and I'll make sure that we cover it. Okay. But for today, for this part, we want to move through it. All right. Number two, here's the second part. What is the math and the path? Like, what are you going to give to get that? So mine's $5 million. And one thing I know I'm going to do is I'm going to train 100 mind body coaches. So I have a certification program. I'm going to train 100 new coaches and I'm creating an alumni continuity program, continued education for all of the coaches that I have trained. So that's one thing I'm going to do. And then we have boss up. If you haven't heard about boss up, you should. This is not a pitch, by the way. I'm just telling you how to map it out. So I know how many clients I need in each container of boss up. And I know what they're going to get. They're going to give me money and I'm going to give them resources. So in exchange for finance or financial for tangible money, I'm going to give them products and services that's going to help them grow their business. This is the year that I have the most clients who are going to hit $100,000. That's what I'm giving in exchange. I get the investment and they get an investment in themselves and they grow their business. So there's the the last thing, let me keep going, (laughs) is I'm going to help business owners, like a company who has employees, I'm going to help them boss up. And I'm going to elevate the employees in the business, improve the culture, and they're going to create more impact through doing this. So those are the three things I'm going to give in exchange. Coach training, solopreneurship on how to help them grow beyond six figures, and then how to help companies align the culture with their employees so that we can create more impact for generations to come. Because those employees are going to affect the people who are at home. Make sense? So what's the math and the path? I know how many clients I need and what offer in order to hit $5 million. What about you? What are you going to give in exchange for $65,000? What are you going to give in exchange for $50,000, for $20,000? Whatever your goal is. If it's not money, maybe it's to serve so many clients. So when you get those clients, what are you going to give them? These, these are like laws of prosperity. They're principles, the the amount of money that you earn is a direct correlation to what you give. The value that you give the world is returned to you. Anybody believe that? Let me just say, do you believe that? Give me give me the the thumbs up and the hearts instead of having to type. I like those. Yes, 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 one hundred percent. Perfect. You're in the right place. So if you are struggling financially, my question to you is what are you giving to result in that right now? Where are you holding back? What are you not giving? What have you been told about service and about the way that you show up, about compensation? You remember when we said, did it come from your family? Did it come from the church, society, the environment? There is a belief there that you need to unlearn the misinformation and then you need to gather the correct information. Everybody good? You got the math and the path? Give me a yes or a thumbs up. Got it. Okay. This is my favorite one. Who do you need to become to receive that? Look, look, my Graphic designer, Emily, how cute. Do y'all, y'all look, someone needs to screenshot this thing. This is good. Who do you need to become? What is your physical life going to look like? What is your bank account going to look like? What car do you drive? What are you thinking about? What are your habits? Oh, it's so cute, Emily. Look at this one. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Y'all like that? Tell her what a great job. She's here somewhere else. She's who's going to be guiding you through the visual board, the virtual vision board. That's it. Who do you need to become? What time do you wake up? Who do you talk to? Who do you hang out with? What are you eating? Like 
I want you to describe that. Who do you need to become? I'm a person who does what I say I'm going to do. I remember whenever I first really got into the high earning position, that was one of the main things I changed. I'm someone who works out every day. I'm someone who says, who does what I say I'm going to do. That's, that's what my journaling looked like. I'm a woman of my word. I'm in integrity. I'm helping. I'm not hiding. And the other thing is, you know, I've been told this in the coaching world, like they become hands off non-touch, right? Like you need to have this persona of not being available. That never worked for me. I like being with my people. And so I see community. I see gatherings. I've been doing live retreats and events for over a decade. And if any of you have been to my events, I'm with you. I'm interested in people. That's who I become. I become a servant. I don't take the money and then go pretend I'm better than you and I can't be with you. I can't hang out with the low lives or whatever. You have heard that before? Don't give them the good stuff. They must pay for that. Have you anybody heard that stuff? Is that who you're going to become? Someone who holds back or someone who gives? Who are you going to become? All right. Oh, I forgot to ask. Is everybody good? Let me look in the chat. Anyone have questions? Questions? Okay. I'm going to move on. What will you give up? This is number four, by the way. Emily, can you correct this? <laughs> What will you give up is number four. I'm like, hold on. Where did it, what did I do here? Did I make, did I add something? Those are the four steps. So number one, what do you want? Number two, how are you going to get it? What are you going to give in exchange? Number three, who do you need to become? How do you need to show up? Number four, what will you give up? I want you to think about going to the grocery store and your hands are filled with bags and you're walking, or you're walking to the house, right? And you're trying to open the door. You cannot do the next thing when your hands are full. You have to put something down to make space to grab, right? Does everybody agree with that? Do you understand that scenario? Or you're clothes shopping. There's no room in the drawers. There's no room in the closet. Like you... You can't find anything. You can't have anything else because you have in that space. The other thing is like you're thinking about, okay, I want $100,000 in my bank account, but I want to sit on the sofa, eat Doritos and watch Netflix. You're not going to get $100,000 doing that. You will need to give up those habits and behaviors. And another scenario or example would be, I want to be in belief, like a 10X lifestyle, like how to 10X your life in business, like the podcast I put out yesterday with my client, Melanie, it comes from big think and big action. So if you're hanging around with people who are telling you it's not possible, that that's stupid, why would you want that? Why do you want to work so much? Why don't you spend more time with me? You're not fun anymore. You never come to the bar. I, it is going to be very hard to soar to the next level. It's like the bottom of the crab scenario. Those old crabs keep pulling you down. They can't up to meet you. And we are meant to be connectors. So it's only natural that you dip down and go back down. And then there's this pulling and tugging. Are there any of you here today that you want to rise and do something different, but something from the past? Can anybody relate to what I'm saying? You might have to cut that away. Now, you don't have to cut people and throw people away. You don't have to end the relationship. The nature of the relationship will change. The conversation will change. Maybe you'll celebrate your financial successes with me but you'll talk about the weather with them. Any of you have someone in your life that you love dearly, but they don't understand you. Since you've been hanging around with those people, since you've been reading those books, you're so weird. That is so painful. And some of that, you will need to cut away the nature of how it was. You will need to give up the conversation that was happening 
And then you'll need to do what? You tell me, put it in the chat. What are you going to need to cut away? What are you going to need to give up? Is it procrastination? Is it perfectionism? Is it old habits and behavior and negativity, hanging around with people who tell you you can't do it? In order to belong, you give up your future self in order to feel connected to somebody who has what you don't want. Who are the five people you hang around with most? Write all this stuff down. Does anyone want to share in the chat what you came up with? Guys, on the VI, in the VIP, we're going to break into this. I'm going to get you to raise your hand. We're going to come on screen. We're going to have conversations. We're going to do breakouts around it. You're going to, you're going to do your vision board and things are going to bubble up when you're doing the vision board. You're going to raise your hand. We're going to work through it. This is the place to celebrate success. Matter of fact, it's expected. I want you to be obsessed with success, with wealth creation, not just getting by and doing paycheck to paycheck or being what you've always seen. Are you willing to give up who you were? for who you want to be? Are you willing to give up what you have in order to have more? These are the questions you need to ask. Are you here? I'm seeing if Audrey's here. I was talking to her this morning and I was like, I'm gonna have some really good questions in the workshop because she was like, you ask really good questions. Can we share those? I was like, you're gonna hear so many great questions in the workshop. I probably get complimented on that more than anything else. It's where do you come up with these questions, these inquiries? Anybody want to share? Why did my people get quiet? Are you, did you all leave me or are you doing your work? So let's go back. What do you want? Why is it important? We're going to break down that why is it important, by the way, because I guarantee you, you did not get to the root source of it. I have a process that dives in really, really deep and we find the anchor in the driver so that you can go out and do what you want to do. And you have something that you have nailed it to. Number two, what's the math and the path? What are you giving in exchange? How many hours do you need to give for that? How much content do you need to put out? Do you need to create workbooks? Do you need to get on calls? Do you need to, like, what are you going to give the world? If your goal is $100,000, how many clients do you need? And how many packages do you need to sell to serve those clients? Mm -mm. There's questions and lots of comments. No, my chat is. Yeah, lots and lots of questions. There was no, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, good. Mallory can answer some of that in the chat, by the way, but it was not showing up on my computer. In a law, money. Okay, I'm going to get to these. Let me get through the slides. I'm sorry, I didn't see them. I would have stopped. But I'm looking at the time. This is the best one right here. Who do you need to become? I want you to truly see who that person is going to be, who you're going to hang out with. You guys should come hang out and boss up. Where, where's my, who's on the call that's in boss up? Tell me, tell me what you think about it. This is the one I'm having trouble with. Who's, who comes? Yo, we do morning accountability calls. Sell like we do role play. It's so good. It's so intense and so deep and they get like, sometimes I worry it's too much of me, but they actually keep coming to all these calls. It is, uh, it's, so Boss Up stands for Business Owner Success Strategies and it's unlocking your potential, your profits and your people. It's so good. Okay. What will you give up? And then we're going to bring this all together right here. So turn your page. I'm going to show you how to do this. Each finger is something that you want. So it might be family vacation to Montana. This one might be lose 20 pounds, gain muscle tone and feel confident in my body. This one might be a deep, meaningful, intimate relationship with my husband or my wife on board in my business. And maybe this one is the money that you want. And maybe this one is something that you've always wanted to attend. Maybe it's a new kitchen. Maybe it's a new house or moving. But you get to write something on each finger that has to do with your goal. So here's an example. If you put $100,000, what are the five things that you're going to get earning that $100,000? 
What are the things that you did? Who did you become? So you get the $100,000 plus those new habits and behaviors. Everybody clear on that? Does anyone have questions? And then I'm going to go read the chats while you work on this. Oh, man, Boss Up has been great. I love the daily morning meetings. I have already grown in my communication and skill set. Yes, I can say this again. So each finger, okay, let me start from the beginning. Let's say your goal is $100,000. Now, everyone close your eyes and imagine $100,000 in your bank account. Now, remember question number two was the math and the path. What did you do to get the $100,000? How many clients did you serve? How many calls do you do, right? That part. Then number three is who did you become? You're going to pull all this together. And this is going to be the representation of all of that. So I earning $100,000 in my business this year in exchange for products and services that help people become better parents, earn more money, heal their body in chronic pain. You get to write whatever your service is by the end of 2024. That's what you're going to write on your hand. Each finger, what did you do to become the person that earns a hundred thousand? Did you get up early and go to the gym every day? Like Andy, I think yours is you do 10,000 steps a day. That's one fit and healthy doing 10,000 steps a day. I am now a disciplined business owner. Number two, what do you do? What does it look like with your family? We go on family vacations. We stay up at night, at night and talk for entertainment. We love each other. We support each other. So we have a supportive family. Number three, I like it, these are all characteristics of the person who achieves the goal. Five different ones. I can tell you what mine are, but I want you to think about what you want. I want a home gym. That might be one finger. I want, like this year is the year I hire a marketer or a social media manager. And then what you're going to do is you have all those fingers that are part of the whole story that you're going to write in the palm. Emily, remind me that next time I'll do an example so that they can see mine compared to the blank one. All right, so that was two people who asked me to repeat. Are you clear now? Good idea. Is everybody? Yes, perfect. So I'm fit and healthy. I travel four times this year. My family and I are on the same page. I have 40 clients this year. I'm busting limiting beliefs. Like it's just, think of adjectives and adverbs on the fingers. There should be no confusion here. You have a goal. That goal is going to give you all these things. You're going to become the person who has those things. And there's no room for what you cut away. You're not talking about going to the bars or talking to people who don't get you. Like I am part of a high-minded community that celebrates my success. I would write that on a finger. I am part of boss up. We are killing it and celebrate each other's success. I'm supported by my community. That's a finger. That's a, it's a thought. It's a positive attribute in your life. All right. We're going to have to come. We're going to have to come to a close on this. So give me some, let me know where you are. If you have any other questions, everybody got it. How you doing, Glenn? Is your family here? Yes. Is she doing it with you? This is one of my favorite couples. I, if you guys don't know this yet, I am into bringing your business into a holistic family business, having everyone on board. This is something I worked with Mallory around and she, it's like here and here's how you do it. Just to give you guys an example. You're like, I have a 12 year old. He doesn't care what I do. Here's an idea. You let him know what that business is going to earn this year. And how he can help you. So in other words, if you help with the dishes and keeping your room clean and maybe contributing somehow, then you will be part of the reward system. So if they want to go on a, a fabulous beach trip, we get to go on the beach trip if we hit this financial goal. And here's how you can help make that happen so that they become a contributor to the celebration. So Mallory can give you an example. We can talk about this in VIP. I love bringing my kids into this movement. 
Yeah. You want to get your kids involved and you're like, remember, we're making a hundred thousand dollars this year so we can go to Disney. And there's a list on the refrigerator of how they contribute to the Disney trip. So if they are doing things around the house that you don't have to do, you can spend more time earning the money. So they contributed. They're like little assistants and they're earning their, what do you call that when you pass the money down? Not retirement, or the hereditary money thing. They're earning that. They're part of that. That has drastically changed how my kids help. Yeah, this used to be Brittany's thing. She, Brittany has a story. I have to do it all myself, right? No, you don't. You just need to let them know what they need to do. They want to help. In all seriousness, what if they don't care? Then it's no big deal. They're not a part of it. No big deal. Don't, don't try to make them be different. I'm just going to tell you, you're probably wrong. They don't care. They, you haven't relayed the message in a way that they win. If you guys have kids that don't care, they haven't gotten the clarity from you on how it matters and how it affects them. Get a sitter when you go to the beach. <laughs> That's a go. Yeah. The thing is with the, with the kid thing, if you think they don't care, you haven't gotten an invested interest and what are you doing that you don't care if they care? Kids are selfish. And if they get a reward, yes, that benefits them. It's Linda did this work with me too, right, Linda? How has that worked with your kids since you started implementing this? Linda's one of my trained coaches. We did this work with her about two, two, three years ago. Her whole family's on board. Her husband is on board. Is he here? Is Kevin here? Yeah, when, when I work with you, I work with your family. Generational impact means all of you. Why would you even be doing life? It wasn't for loving your family and wanting to do good for your family and setting an example for your family, wanting them to have an amazing life. I know a lot of us is severed, but this is about healing and restoring the family unit. That's, that's why we do business. That's why we achieve our goals because we want to set an example for people that we love. And it's okay if it's extended family and they don't care, but if it's care about and they don't care, how can you take responsibility for showing them how they gain, how they win? How can you show them that? Did y'all see my grandson came with me to Miami to a real estate summit, got VIP, put us in the front of the room, paid for his expenses, people like, he won. He got to do something he wouldn't have been able to do. Do you realize what a big deal that is? Most of us as adults did not get this kind of opportunity where someone paid our way to be educated on financial understanding. Loved meeting him. Yes, he was great. He was. He was. I lost my voice, so I couldn't talk. So he had to talk for me. I'm pretty sure it's because I generally give too much. We can work, Megan's a private uh, client. We can work on this. Okay. So Linda says, my 16-year-old sits in the dishes, kitchen, bathrooms. My 16-year-old does laundry, mows the grass, takes care of the animals. And it's crazy, the change from me having to do it. And Linda, we're, what was your attitude before we did this work? What did you think? They just make a mess. I got to do it all myself. No one wants to help. I'm always complaining. Difference between you saying that now and who you are. No one helps. If you knew how many hours I put into coaching these young moms. Is the sound cutting out for anyone? I'm sorry. It's my internet. I saw, I saw that it said it was unstable. All right, guys, we are at time. I want to make sure you got this. What will I get? What will I give in return? the date it'll be done. And in the hand, you're writing that all-inclusive statement. I will get $5 million in exchange for helping people with my products and services so that they can reach their personal, professional, and financial goals by the end of December, 2024. That is my message. That is what is on my hand. Everything is about creating generational impact normalizing women's wealth, including Glenn's wife. <laughs> Glenn's my buddy, by the way, but I am talking to his wife. I want to invite you 
to boss up. I'm going to use two minutes to talk about it. This is so we have a boot camp coming up this weekend. It's a three day boot camp, which sets you up for the year. You'll have your goal, you'll have your word, and this is going to take you through the exact journey, your client journey. So, what's the brand house? Who is your customer? Where are they? How do you speak to them? How do you invite them into your programs? And then you get to do accountability and role-playing calls with me every single morning. Where's my people who are doing this? Monday through Friday. Gosh, y'all, it's so good. So you can come just to the workshop. It's $2,500. And you get three months in the high end, the VIP, Boss at VIP. You get two or three, you get three calls a week. You get a business call. You get a personal mindset and money call. You get a tech call plus five 45-minute sessions with me. Look, Andy said it's so good. Whoop, whoop, so good. These girls are on there every morning. This is brand new. They were part of the pilot program. So that's why they know about it. They've been in since the front end. This was created six months ago. So I'm telling you about it now for the first time. So in the Boss Up Boot Camp, you're going to get me Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're going to dial in. If you can't make it live, you get the replay. And then you have three months. So we're going to have a 90-day implementation plan. And then you have three months in the community for $3,000. Guys, this is crazy. You are for sure going to get at least $10,000 back on that. Not that I can make a claim, void, void, void. But if you 10X your money, that means you will make $30,000 in three months. Are you ready? Don't think... Don't think on it for one more second, y'all. If you want to change your life, join this community. Yeah, the entire cell is how to take take your audience from coal to soul. Coal to soul. In other words, they don't know you. You don't know them. And then you sell them on your product and services and you help them. Coal to soul. That's what Boss Up is about. Business owner success strategies to unlock your personal potential. We do mindset coaching. We do subconscious coaching. We get through roadblocks, the limiting beliefs, the generational patterns, the religious beliefs. We break through all of that stuff. Three months with me, with these amazing ladies who've been coming. And you get all of our workshops, sales, marketing, role-playing. We do this on a regular, we do the big one every quarter, but we do like every week we have a new content. I'm looking at my time. I don't want to go over because I want to be able to answer questions. So if you just click on there, it's going to take you to the sales page. This is my offer for you to take this work deeper. But if you haven't signed up for VIP, please stay. Because for $97, you're going to get so much of this. The role playing is amazing and a safe playground. Yeah, it's happening this weekend. Sorry. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Everyone's going to have to go through it when they join Boss Up anyway. It is going to be in the in the portal, so you're going to get the replay regardless. But guys, it's going to be so good. It's the very first time I do it, so I needed to do it live so that we can get it into the portal. But we're going to repeat it for those who are in Boss Up. We're going to repeat it. Okay, because what's going to happen is every three months, you're going to be a different person. Have you guys heard me talk before about it takes 28 days to break a habit? It takes 28, the next 28 days to implement the new habit. And then it takes the next 28 days in order to become the new person. So when we say, who are you going to become? The 90 days takes you through that 90 day process for $3,000. Come on. That's crazy. You guys know how expensive business coaching is. It's $30,000 to work with me. It's a steal. Anyway. All right. Any questions? Post it in the chat. We've got two minutes. We've got to hop off and get on the other link. Please give me a takeaway from the from this past hour. Give me a takeaway. And I'm just going to ask you this. Do you want to be able to make an offer like this where your client wins and you do it with confidence? Because that's what we teach you in Boss Up. How to present yourself, how to network. Most of you don't know how to network. You're, you're pitching people all the time and they're turned off by you. I already am clarity on who I need to become. Yes, yes. If you want something different, you have to do something different. Sandra is coming into the coach program. Very excited. She starts this week. You are talking to me. I know I'm talking to you. (laughs) Clarity on what I want, what I need to get. Why is it important about what I want? Yes. Why is it important? Glenn, I know why it's important to you and your family and those babies and your wife. I know why. 
My win is diving into what I will give. Amazing, Rebecca. And it's giving with intention and focus. I'm willing to let go of what I know in order to know something else and become someone new. Beautiful. You guys paid attention. All right. Anything else? One more, one more, and then we got to hop out of here. Are you glad you came? Was it worth, was it worth your time? Because you did pay with your time and attention. Always. Yes. Perfect. All right, my friends, I'm going to end it here and we're going to hop onto the VIP. Can you put the link one more time, Mallory, in case you guys want to grab it, you're going to get that plus you're going to get credit for what you're spending. So guys, I promise you it's going to be worth it. Don't think about the money. And if you want a replay of it, if you're feeling FOMO, just come to VIP. All right. I'm not sure. I didn't see the link, Mallory. There it is. Okay, guys, last second. You got to grab it if you're going to grab it and come to VIP. You will have the rest of the afternoon with me. If you come, you can answer. We'll answer all your questions. You'll come on live and you'll get to do your virtual workshop. Emily says, come on, y'all. She's not even from Texas anymore. She's from Vermont. (laughs) Thank you. You're awesome. Thank you guys for coming. Can I get the VIP replay? Yes, you can get the replay. Sign up for it so that you get it. All right, my friends. Love you all. Let's go get our goals.